Robert Sarian accounts strategists, book she, who shall be Sarikal Sark in twelve time. That race is sitting so Robin, or the Michel Sakis, Ewell Sari, Zonga, Google Sarikal product, I'm super Ewell Spartan Guy Gift, the Shendig Mayor, Michel Saki, who was student of the Satis, a professor of the Satis, as a Google Marketing Challenge. I'm also good at all of this, Robin, Chani Mago. So, let's, Jay. I introduced you already. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can you can start. Great. Well, I'm not sure um, how we were just introduced because I can't speak Georgian very well. But my name is Matthew Southern. Uh, Jay and I are both uh, working with the agency team out in Mountain View, California. Um, I've been working at Google for for two years now. I've been working in online advertising for almost five years, more like four and a half. And um, we wanted to come here today, give you a little sense of how we can get students involved in, in Google AdWords, maybe build your career up a little bit, get excited about digital marketing, and uh, also just uh, give any business owners here just a quick, uh, quick few tips on how you can go about uh, getting online for the first time, what types of things you really need to think about before starting to spend your first Lari on Google AdWords. I'll hand it over to Jake. All right. Thanks, Matt. As Matt mentioned, so I've been at Google for about four and a half years, and both of us work on our agency team. So what we do is we work with advertising agencies on their clients to help them optimize their average spend. And so we've worked with some of the smallest advertising in the business. We've also worked with advertisers spending millions of dollars a year, ranging across every single business vertical. So between us, I think we have quite a bit of experience to help share with you. And it's there's going to be a lot of material today. Um, we'll definitely have time for questions uh, okay. and various points. So before we get started, I guess first, raise your hand if you've heard of AdWords before. <laughs> One, two, right. three. Okay. <laughs> cool. Can someone tell me what you when you use AdWords, what is it? I can tell. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I have used that for our website. Okay. I have used that for tag words for the website. So it was very useful for search engine optimization. Great. All right, so we can use AdWords for search. Does anyone know what else we can use AdWords to do? That's YouTube. There we go. So we can use it to advertise on YouTube as well. And then finally, you may not have heard of this, but it's the Google Display Network. So, I think actually it might be best to start off with a video. Um, but actually, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit why we're here today. So, among my side projects, you might have heard that Google gets 20 Googlers get 20% time to work on random projects. Unfortunately, actually, it's just more like 120% time. So, if you want to work on top of your normal job, you're welcome to do that for free. Um, but one thing that we discovered about six or seven years ago was that professors, even though digital marketing is opening up, a lot of jobs are opening up in the space. Many agencies, hundreds if not thousands of agencies have been formed around the world. Universities are not necessarily teaching the skills that are necessary to succeed. And it isn't because students and professors don't want to learn, but they're not exactly sure how to do so in a way that's going to give you the kind of experience you really need. And so we started a competition. And the concept is fairly simple. A student teams of between three and six students from almost any country in the world can sign up, find a local business or nonprofit that is not currently running online advertising, and we'll give you $250. And you take that $250 and you actually run an online campaign for three weeks. After the three weeks, you upload a campaign report talking about what you did and if uh, your campaign proves to be successful and your report is great by your judges, um, you can win prizes. So every year we have several thousand teams from all over the world compete in one of four regions, Europe, America, Asia, Americas, Asia Pacific, and then Middle East and Africa. So you would fall into the Europe region. And the top 15 teams in the Europe region would get a certificate, uh, so the top five teams, and then the number one team in the Europe region will actually the team and the professor will get a trip to Google, um, probably our Dublin or our London office. You also get Chromebooks as well. And if you're one, if you're the one global winner from any of the regions, you actually win a trip to Mountain View, uh, California, to our headquarters. So listen up, because you could get a free trip to California. <laughs> properly, so. But at the end of the day, it's not really about prizes. That's not really the goal. 
The goal of this, because 99% of the teams won't get that, is to give you guys a rewarding experience where you can use this to further your career. But I guess before we get started, let's explain a little bit about what AdWords actually is. So I'm going to play this. Um, this is a very complicated ecosystem. So today we're really just going to focus on AdWords and not on any of the other kinds of digital marketing that might be out there. Uh, this video is a couple, a few minutes long. I'm going to stop it short, but it'll give you a little bit of an overview of how AdWords works. So, what is AdWords? Put simply, AdWords is Google's online advertising platform that can help you drive interested people to your website. AdWords allows you to take advantage of the millions of searches conducted on Google each day. You create ads for your business and choose when you want them to appear on Google above or next to relevant search results. The concept is simple. You enter words that are relevant to your products or services, and then AdWords shows your ad on Google when someone searches for that or related words. So how does AdWords work? Say you search for window repair. Google combs through billions of web pages, blogs, and other listings to find the ones most relevant to window repair. These are your search results. Looks familiar, right? But wait, there are thousands of search results here. Many of them are other businesses also providing window repair. But not all businesses may be listed among the top results. AdWords gives your business visibility, even if your website is not in the top results. AdWords can help get your business to appear on Google in front of many potential customers. They search. They find your business. They click. They could become your customers. Let's take a look at another example of how AdWords can help you grow your business. Say you want to attract customers in your local area. AdWords lets you pick when and where you want your ads to show. That is, you can target your ads so that whenever people in your state, region, city, or neighborhood search for businesses like yours, your ads show up next to their search results. With AdWords, you can also display your ad on thousands of sites across the web. Your ads will show up when potential customers are visiting sites related to the products and services you offer. For example, let's say you sell fitness apparel. Your ads might appear on sites that discuss fitness, workouts, healthy living, and related topics. Anyone browsing the web for new workout gear and learning about the latest fitness trends may be interested in buying from your site. Lastly, every day, millions of people access the internet from their mobile devices. They research products and services, search for local businesses, and click on your ad from their mobile phones to call you directly for more information. Your potential clients are on the move, and with AdWords, your business can be wherever your customers are. As you can see, AdWords can help you attract new customers and grow your business online. In addition to helping you create ads that target the people most likely to buy your products and services at the time they're most ready, it also helps you manage and control your advertising spend. With AdWords, you select the maximum amount that you are willing to spend, and you only pay when someone clicks on your ad and visits your site. So what? All right, so that gives a bit of an overview of what AdWords is. And just so you know, like, why it matters, um, this graph basically just shows, uh, the blue line shows that people who are willing to increase spend in that particular thing for the next year, and the gray shows people who are actually planning to decrease in spend. And as you can see, it's a little hard with the, uh, with the sign, but um, the digital stuff at the top is getting a lot more invested by marketers around the world. And the stuff that's offline is actually getting less. So it's going to be an area that's only going to grow and importance in the coming years. Now, why would a business use AdWords? I mean, there's three big areas. First, obviously, is reach. Um, raise your hand if you've used Google in the last day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. So, as you can see, basically, most people use Google at one point or another. Obviously, you use it because Google gives you relevant search results, and we use the same sort of mapping technology to 
uh, target ads to the right keywords as well. Uh, and then lastly, it is a pay-per-click model. So you're not, there's no upfront commitments, there's no contracts, there's no minimum spend requirements. You can spend $5 a day today and turn it off tomorrow. And, uh, and you also decide the maximum amount that you're willing to pay for a user to click on your ad. So that's an our ad auction system that we'll get into in a second. So through that, you actually get a tremendous amount of control over how much you're spending and where you're spending it. So before we go into hours, um, that's going to talk a little bit about how you, what you should think about as a student or as a business interested in getting into digital marketing. Um, and some of the big questions you should be asking. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. So who here is a student in some kind of marketing class? No one? I've already graduated. You've already graduated? Okay, but you, you've taken a marketing class, right? Yes. Okay, good. And all the rest of you in the back, right? And you, okay. And who's a, a business owner here? Not yet. No, not yet. That's good. That's good. That's the right attitude because you're all entrepreneurial and you're going to make your own business eventually. Okay. But I think there, there's three phases of advertising you need to think about uh, when you start getting online. Uh, the first and foremost is how do you spark awareness? How do you get people to know about your product and actually be interested enough to show up at your store or even type it into Google in the first place? The second phase, and really the phase that you know, Google has really built itself off of, is capturing intent. And this is an area that is kind of new in terms of marketing. Before, it was hard to be able to just capture anyone that was looking for a certain product. Now with, with Google AdWords, you're basically waiting for your customers to come through, and anytime they come through, we're simply catching them and pulling them into the site. Very effective. Um, oh. <laughs> How would you measure a TV ad's effectiveness? Would it, does anyone here have an idea of how 
people measure a TV ad's effectiveness? Uh, I think yeah. that... Yeah, I know it. No. Yeah, with yeah I can say it. They are, in, uh, they are measuring it with the in, uh, program uh, ratings. awareness ratings. Yes, yeah. ratings. They are measuring it with GRP, which is the, the entity, how they measure it, how yeah. many people watched that uh, movie or program in that complete period yeah. when they were running it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so it's it's how how many people watched it, but do they know how many people actually came into the store? For example, yeah, yeah. For example, when I go to the bar, they'll ask me. I mean, uh, we are from. We do know about this bar, and maybe they should be higher. Yeah. Exactly. So the, you know, it's it's it's, it's an inaccurate science right now. There's many different ways. Well, that, it's really easy to say that the internet is the best way for the measurement. I I agree with yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> there are also many other possibilities. How it's possible to measure, for example, outdoor as they are doing eye tracking, right? And you can not, you can count how many people saw that. But advertising again, outside. this is an inaccurate science because yeah, yeah, tracking impressions is one thing. Tracking how many people maybe saw your TV ad, tracking how many people maybe saw your outdoor ad is is all fine and good. But it's not actually getting down to the root of your goals. I mean, you're not seeing how many people are coming to the store. It, a lot of times, people will maybe put a, a phone number on a TV ad, and if that specific phone number is used, then they can see that the ad had some kind of impact. But again, it is an inaccurate science that people have been trying to perfect over the last 40 years and haven't been able to. And it's something that we've been able to do in the last 10 years with great accuracy. So. In terms of the measurement here, with online marketing, you're able to see very clearly how much money you put in and how much money comes out of it. It's much clearer science. It's very easy to understand in terms of how many people saw my ad, how many people were maybe interested in the ad, but then how many people actually followed through and bought my product. There's three different categories there, and in terms of traditional advertising, you can only see the top one. You can only see how many people perhaps maybe saw your ad. So, the measurement side of things is another great piece and why online advertising really beats out traditional advertising. Now, before you get into online advertising though, I think there's four questions you need to ask yourself. And these are key because before you spend your first salary on, on any ads, you really need to ask yourself these questions before jumping into everything. The first is, what are your goals? Is it sales? Probably. I mean, money is always the objective when it comes to advertising. But there are many other goals that we can go into. Do you already do any kind of marketing? Are you doing TV? Are you doing print? Are you doing radio, for that matter? What's your budget? I think that's one of the key questions you really need to ask yourself um, because this is really what's going to bring the most uh, impact for your, your company. And finally, is your website ready to run advertising? Now, if you don't have a, a mobily ready website, you can be missing out on 50% of your audience. You could be wasting 50% of the money that you put into to online advertising because if 50% of the people that come through are coming mobily and they see your site and it's too big, you know, zoom in. Not and user zoom, friendly. Exactly, it's not very user friendly. People are going to bounce off it immediately, and you just lost a potential customer right there. So. Really keep in mind, make sure that your site is ready to run before you actually start putting money towards online advertising. Now, I want to jump into the goals first because there's a lot of intangible goals that you can look at when it comes to online advertising. <coughs> now, sales first and foremost are the mo is the most important. You know, that's, what, that's what pays the bills, that's what puts your kids into school, um, that's what puts food on the table. But what kind of things could you maybe add on as goals that are actually going to be able to engage your potential audience even more, and perhaps get them to spend more money when they get into your store. Perhaps come back to you as a repeat customer rather than just being a one-time customer. So do you want to try to drive email signups? Do you want people to maybe like your page? Do you want people to subscribe to your YouTube channel? All these additional little soft metrics, as we call them, are things that are actually going to be able to influence your customer even more and are going to see a larger bottom line for yourself at the end. So don't think just sales. Think about how you can engage your audience as much as possible. Second, think about your goals, but then think about 
what the consideration time is for someone seeing your product for the first time and when someone's actually going to purchase your product for the first time. This will tie into budget a little bit, but budget and consideration time can be two of the biggest factors for people being turned off from online advertising. They don't realize that it's not just a floodgate or a switch that you turn on and all of a sudden the, the traffic comes in and the sales come in. The traffic can come in, but the sales may take two, three weeks to actually come forth. So just keep that in mind and do factor that in. In terms of your current marketing, Jay and I tend to, to work with two different types of people out there. Now, there's people that have done no advertising whatsoever. You know, not done any kind of print advertising, not done any digital advertising, and they're getting the digital advertising right at the right time, but they don't know how to go about it. They don't understand what the capturing intent portion of the advertising is versus maybe the branding or the sparking awareness portion of it. So that's the one type of people we, we tend to work with. The other type is traditional advertisers that are now ready to move over to digital advertising. And those types of people tend to be some of the easiest people to work with because they already have ads that are ready to run. If you have TV ads, they can be switched over to YouTube just by simply uploading the video. If you have print ads, those can be repurposed for the Google Display Network, no problem. So consider that, but then also think a little bit about how you're going to run these ads. Is it going to be running with traditional advertising, or are you just going to stop your traditional advertising and put all the money towards digital, which I would personally suggest, but uh, I, I don't want to tell you how to run your business on that one, so uh, take that with a grain of salt. Finally, budget again. I, I want to reiterate this time and time again because people think of a budget a lot of times as a sunk cost that you're never going to see uh, coming back to you. And I think that's the wrong way to think about it. People think that marketing is just going to be throwing some money out the door and hopefully some people come in. I think with online advertising, budget is, is not a sunk cost. Budget is an investment. Okay? If you're going to be getting $3 back for every dollar you put in, don't cut yourself short. Don't put in only $1,000 per month. Put in $5,000, you know? If this is gonna be an investment, if this is like stocks, you're gonna to wanna to put in more money if you know that the gains are gonna be higher. So really consider that, but then tie that back with your consideration time because the first month of advertising tends to be some of the most painful points of advertising. You're starting to put money into it, you're not seeing the response yet, it's taking a couple weeks for someone to consider whether or not to buy your product. But just take that into mind and you should usually see some nice results coming through in the first and the second month. But the first four weeks tend to be kind of painful. So that's when you're tweaking ads, that's when you're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. You're shifting budget around to figure out you know, where the money's actually going to come in, what campaign works the best. So do consider that as much as possible. So now that we kind of cover the four questions that you need to ask yourself about advertising, now we can talk about the types of advertising you can do with Google. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite slides, and this is something that we use in almost every single client presentation that we ever do, because it talks about where things kind of fit into the larger piece. Because what you want to have is an integrated marketing plan. You know, we, and at least through Google, we do have things at every stage of the funnel. Um, and so, you know, at the, at the very low end, to start off, with Google search, you're, you're basically capturing intent. You don't have to go find them. They're already coming to you. They're already coming to the one website, and you just have to be there, sitting in the river, waiting for the fish to come by and to grab them. And if you have a smaller budget, that's really where you're going to get your highest returns immediately. If you have a little bit more money, and you want to move a little bit further up the pipeline to start finding new customers, uh, people who might be interested in topics, that's where you're going to utilize your Google Display Network and you're going to find websites with content that's more relevant to your business. Uh, and then lastly, if you've kind of gotten that all covered and now it's you're completely expanding the market, that's where YouTube and all the other social media networks that are out there kind of fall into the picture in, in terms of, um, first off, actually, they actually belong both at the top of the funnel and at the bottom because not only at the top in terms of spreading awareness, to people who may not even have heard of your industry um, before, uh, but they're also used for engagement at the bottom as well. So after they may have visited your website, after they made a purchase, YouTube and other social networks are great for building a community where people become brand ambassadors and will actually 
contribute to it and come back to the customers. Going off that, talking a little bit about YouTube and the display network and, and sparking awareness, I want to tell you a little bit about the targeting methods that you can use in order to, to drive people down the funnel and try to get them to that phase where they're actually searching for you for the first time. Now, with YouTube and the Google Display Network, there's fantastic targeting options out there. You can go after specific demographics. Say I'm selling Georgian football jerseys, and I want to target men in Tbilisi between the ages of 18 and 50. In order to do that, it's a very simple process, very simple. And it's something that, as I said before, marketers have dreamed about for half a century and have only realized in the last 10 years. Targeting men and police between 18 and 24, or 18 and 50, <coughs> simply clicking off like five different checkboxes as you're setting up a campaign. Very easy. So the demographic targeting, fantastic. You can do placement targeting. Say if you want to be on a specific newspaper, say if you want to be on a specific blog. Google has access to about 90, 95% of the sites on the web so that you can serve ads on that site. So consider that also if you want to be on a specific um, website. Topic targeting, contextual targeting, kind of plug in a little bit with the placement targeting. We can go after specific sites that are talking about your industry, talking about your types of products. Say you're selling a car, for instance, and you want to target anyone that's looking at new cars. We can target auto sites, we can target sites that are maybe talking about the new BMW X5, even though I can definitely never buy one of those. But it, the, the topic targeting and the contextual targeting basically look at the context of the site and then place the ad on the site accordingly. Finally, oh, remarketing right there. Remarketing is one of my favorites, and I'm going to give you a little pro tip for your Christmas shopping that's coming up. So does anyone know what remarketing is? Good. Okay, that's 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 nice. <laughs> we, has anyone seen an ad for a site they've been to after they've left the site? Yes. yes? Yeah. So, say for instance, you want to buy a, a new set a set of shoes this Christmas. My suggestion for you is to put those shoes in your shopping cart on the website and then leave the site. <laughs> Don't buy them. Because and it'll keep popping up. So the first day afterwards, perhaps they try to incentivize you with free shipping. Maybe a week down the road, they start realizing, okay, like, let's, let's try to get them back to the site now. 15% off plus free shipping. Two weeks down the road, 3% off. I wouldn't go much past two weeks because after that point, maybe they're like, they're not gonna buy from us anyway. But when it comes to the Christmas shopping season, do consider that because um, you can save a little bit of money right there. So. Just a little pro tip, uh, but also remarketing can, can do other things as well. So say if you have specific products that you want to show someone. Say for instance, I looked at a pair of new Puma shoes on a shoe site, and I left the site afterwards. You can then show those specific Puma shoes in the advertisement to really speak to the person and try to drive them back. You know, remarketing can either be your brand name and your logo trying to drive them back, or you can talk to them even more. You can show them the set of glasses they may looked at on that site so that it really speaks to them and they realize, oh, I remember looking at those. Maybe you all think about buying them now. So remarketing is another very powerful tool. I say that if you have a smaller budget, first thing you need to do is really jump into search because that's where you're going to capture your, your customers. But then maybe put in a little bit more money on remarketing because say someone leaves the site, you might as well follow up with them. Yep, I completely agree, Matt. The only caveat to this, honestly, is if you're in a product or service that's so new that no one's even heard of it before and no one even can think to search on it, that's where you would want to start off on YouTube. So an example might be, I worked, I've worked with a business in the past that actually um, you could rent high quality cameras for vacations. And I don't know about Georgia, but in the United States, that's actually not very well known. I had never heard of that concept until that happened. I don't actually have to buy a $2,000 camera. I can literally just rent one for $50 and pick it up from a locker down the street or have it shipped to me and I keep it for a week. And so with that, we, we, we discussed them very closely about putting money into YouTube because that's something where you need to tell a story. And a one-line headline with two text links or even like a small banner ad is really not going to be what is necessary to explain what it is. But a 15-second or a 20-second video will be enough. So those are the times 
in which you may want to invest in YouTube before you go into search. But for most businesses that already exist out there or people who are already searching for those type of products or services, search is going to be the way to go. And, and something to mention about that is that all our products kind of plug in together. So on the YouTube line, say someone watches your video all the way through, and, and on YouTube, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's, there's skippable ads. If someone skips the ad, you don't actually pay for the ad being shown. If someone watches the ad all the way through, then you actually pay for the view. So it's fantastic in terms of actually engaging the audience versus TV where someone might drop off and, and turn off television or simply go make a cup of tea when the ads come on. But they still have to watch like five seconds. Do you have to pay for those? No, no. you don't pay for those five seconds. So but what if I put my company name or product name in this? Great idea. Great idea. Great idea. <laughs> you actually only pay if you watch the first 30 seconds or the full length of the ad, whatever is shorter. So if it's 15 second ad, then the full 15 seconds. But if it's longer than 30 seconds, then it's only after the first 30 still seconds. Have, uh, some to have a chance to have a free advertisement when you just... Uh, exactly, so if you have your brand name in those first five seconds like you mentioned, yeah, exactly. very smart, very smart. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a free impression it's and it's getting people interested. And can you choose the video actually? Or uh, maybe it's, maybe I want to uh, put my egg on a music video, mm -hmm. video and it, it will depend on the price, for example. Sure. For example, the, the video where they, for example, the young viewers, and it is uh, much more um, cheaper, or, or what it depends on the price. It, it depends on what the ad auction is. Music video tends to be um, more competitive content, because and so that all inventory gets bid on very high. So perhaps, but uh, definitely, um, you can choose what kind of videos you want to try to bid against if, if you want. And what's cool about that is that, you know if someone does watch the video all the way through. You can still follow up with them. Like it's not like you've shown them the video and then you, you pray that they're actually going to make it to the site afterwards. Um, you can actually bucket that person into a remarketing. So if someone watched the full 15 seconds, 30 seconds, even 45 seconds if you wanted to, you can then take that group of people that have watched the full video, put them into a remarketing audience, uh, into a remarketing bucket and then start serving them remarketed ads after they've left YouTube, before they've even made it to your site for the first time. So, you know that audience is interested, might as well follow up. Another way that kind of remarketing plugs in with both search, but also YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, so now we're going to move on to the challenge. We wanted to give you a big overview um, of all this stuff, but the challenge is actually going to mostly focus on Google search. So, for the purposes of that, you don't have to do a display in YouTube, just something to keep in mind for the future. So, I'm going to show you a video. Um, it's actually a friend of mine that I actually know very well. Um, she actually participated in the challenge three years ago, and this is actually her story. The Google Online Marketing Challenge was the most rewarding experience of my academic career. My team and I won the America's Regional Business Award my senior year at James Madison University. Lindsay and her team were just amazing. They were professional, they worked hard, and they developed a campaign that met the client's objectives. Dr. Clark had brought up Lindsay on a few instances talking about how successful she and her team had been, how she'd gone off to work for Google, and how the challenge had prepared her. But I think that she's definitely kind of a poster child for success and for what can happen if you take the challenge seriously and you know what you want out of it. The Google Online Marketing Challenge is an international competition for students and academics which annually attracts participants from over 1,000 universities and nearly 100 countries. Students get to select a business or a non-profit organization in their local community or anywhere in the world and they create an online advertising campaign for them using Google AdWords and Google Plus. Students get to run an AdWords campaign for a real client using an actual budget over a three-week period. It's a contest, but it gives an opportunity to build up the skill set through hands-on experience. We worked with a local business that sold customizable promotional products. The company had never had a single online sale before, and after running an AdWords campaign for just three weeks, that was no longer the case. I learned a lot about understanding how to use AdWords and how to capitalize on different campaigns that we wanted to use and employers are looking for students that have that experience. Based on the performance of our students and the recognition to the Google Challenge, we've had more and more recruiters coming to campus 
and specifically because they know our students are getting these kinds of experiences here at the university. I was able to leverage the skill set that I developed while participating in the challenge to get a job in the online advertising industry. Ultimately, it led to a job at Google, where I'm currently an account strategist helping small and medium-sized businesses. If I didn't do the challenge, I think it would be a lot harder to stand out from everyone else and applying for jobs after school. In interviews, you can always talk about what you've learned in a class. Because I had that kind of experience on my resume, I think that helped me really stand out and get the job that I have today. spend a few minutes on that and then finish up with talking about the Google Online Marketing Challenge and take whatever questions you guys might have. So as you can see, this should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, if you're looking for ghost hunting, um, you can get Ghostbusters. So how do, how do you actually determine how we rank the ads? Because you can actually have up to 10 ads. Uh, the top ones will appear above the search results and then numbers 4 through 10 will appear on the side. So essentially we use an ad auction system. Uh, raise your hand if you've used eBay before. eBay. Okay. So you won't, even though you put in a bid, you only pay the person plus one cent. So the same thing here is here with, with, a, with, a, with a slight twist. And that uh, one of the big things that we actually done is we take into account the quality of the ad. And so every single time that you search on Google.com, and there's over a billion searches that happen per day, they recalculate the quality score for every single ad that's in a particular auction. That's what we need all the data centers around the world and all that computer power for. It's actually mind-boggling that we're able to do this. But we actually assign a value between 1 and 10 for every single ad that's in that auction. And it's based on many different factors. But three big ones that you need to think about. First off is relevancy. How relevant is the keyword to the ad to the website you're trying to direct traffic to? Number two. Um, what is the click-through rate? So is it a good ad? Just because it's grammatically correct and relevant doesn't mean you have a good offer. If you have a 45% off versus 10% off, one would assume that, that's a, that people would click on it at a higher rate, and thus we reward that. We think that anything over 1% is considered pretty good, uh, but the farther above that you get, 10, 15, 20%, you'll actually um, get a better quality score over time because it takes into account the performance. And lastly, we look at your landing page. So, not only from a policy perspective, so if anyone's trying to start a heroin business, I don't think you can use that word. <laughs> um, but, uh, but in addition, we want websites that can load quickly, that are clear and transparent. We have a series of guidelines on our website that you should also check out to make sure that your landing page is actually a good one. Which is also a good thing to do anyways, because there's no sense in spending this money to get traffic to a website that is ugly and won't lead to people actually um, buying your product or service. So what we do is, okay, we take your bid, advertiser A, he, he said, I'm going to pay up to $3 for somebody to click on my ad. And um, I have a quality score of 6, so my ad rate score is actually 18. Now, how much do I actually pay? It's enough for number one. Well, it depends on what the second advertiser below you ends up uh, bidding. And so here there is just 12. Well, since they have the same quality score, essentially, um, you're going to pay uh, $2.01 to appear in the first spot. Uh, now, for the second person, he's still going to appear. And how it actually works is that he's just going to pay just enough to bet out that 9 ad rank at his own quality score, which is a 6. So therefore, even though he paid $2, he's actually only going to pay like $1.50. Even though he bid less than the person beneath him, who actually, this is a 3. Um, uh, because they had a worse quality score, it's actually possible that even if you're not the highest bidder, you can still get better performance because you have a better ad. And I think that's where a lot of the fun in AdWords comes into trying to figure out how can we create a better ad that's more relevant, that's going to get more people clicking on it, and thus reduce your advertising costs. Um, next up, okay, how do you buy it? Um, just generally, there'll be a process for Google Online Marketing Challenge, but generally you basically just create an account, Put in your information, and this is what the dashboard looks like. And you set up a campaign. Um, you set 
the name of that, where you're trying to target. Um, it's actually a fairly, and the budget you want to spend per day. So you actually set a daily budget. And that's how you control your cap. So even though you're willing to pay $3 per click, maybe you don't have the budget for 100,000 clicks a day. Maybe you only have $10. That's fine. You can set that up. Um, and then you also create some ads and you create some keywords. So essentially, you might have one or more campaigns. So the campaign is going to be where you're going to say, that I want to target people in Tbilisi who are interested in buying new cars. Um, you're going to set a budget of $10 a day. Um, and then at the ad group, you can have multiple ad groups per campaign. Uh, you can have multiple campaigns as well. And ad group basically just says that for this set of keywords, I want this ad to show. So if they want to buy a Honda, you probably want a Honda-related ad to match a Honda-related keyword. If you're going to have Toyota, you're probably going to want a separate ad group because the ad text is going to be slightly different and maybe even leading to a different page on your website than the first. Uh, so you set that in and then that's also where you can set your bids as well. Um, on the high level, pretty simple, right? Not too bad. Um, generally, when you pick your keywords, you're going to fall into two types of groups. Um, you can set how broadly you want it to do. So for example, you can say, if you want broad match and type in pizza, that's going to match to any search term. So when we say search term or search query, that means what the user is actually typing in. And a keyword always refers to what you select to target. So your keyword might be pizza, but if you left it on broad match, it's going to match to any search that contains the word pizza, uh, which may not be what you want. So you may want to narrow it down a little bit, and there's, and there's ways to do it to make it a little bit more precise. I only want people who type in pizza to be seen, for example. Um, and then lastly, when you think about it, generally most ad campaigns run into two types of ad groups, branded and non-branded. So branded keywords are the names of your business, most likely, or the names of the product or service that you're going to be offering. And some people ask me, why bid on your own brand term? I already am number one on Google search results. Like, why, why should I pay more money when I can already get it for free? Uh, and the answer is threefold. Number one, I've actually done studies to show this, but Having your ad at the top, as well as the top search results, actually increases the overall amount of traffic to your website rather than just owning the number one search results. Uh, because you, there might be other review sites or competitors that might be further down, and you want to appear as much as possible to prevent them from going to the other side. Second, just because we index your website doesn't mean we have the messaging or it's leading to the landing page that you want them to. Maybe you have a special coupon or offer that you want everyone who's searching your brand name to know about. There's not really a way on the organic search results to guarantee that that's what's going to show. But on the ad, you can definitely make sure that they go straight to the coupon page. And then thirdly, um, and this goes back to what we call conquesting, you cannot put your competitor terms into your own ad text but you can use their competitive terms as keywords. So it's essentially setting up a billboard across the streets from your competitor's store, being like, oh, they're about to walk into the store. No, actually, hey, check us out first. Um, so even though you won't put it in, you're gonna have to pay a lot more because your quality score is gonna be low, that's turned out to be a very effective thing that a lot of industries do. It's a great method also if you have a small brand and you're going up a big, uh, big competitor. So if no one knows your brand, but there's another brand name out there that everyone knows, you can piggyback off of all the marketing they have done, all the TV ads, the radio ads, even the Google ads that they've done, and basically capture those people at the very end. And you can piggyback off of a bigger brand or name and really elevate your own brand and your own profile by simply conquesting over those terms. Yeah. And um, also, bidding on yourself is also a form of defense to prevent other competitors from doing the same thing to you. And uh, with this ad auction thing, it, it costs a lot less for you to defend your own shirt because you can put your own name in your ad copy and also drives up the cost for your competitor. Um, again, not, you know, that's just a strategy that we have found um, people to use. Um, and you know, there's other reasons people have found for doing you know, branded. Non-brand is just you know, all the other keywords that you might want to uh, compete on. Well, there's a lot more there, but don't worry, we're not going to go through any of this right now. That's all of your guys' job to learn uh, over the coming months. Um, but the last thing, and I think this is really fun to think about, is measurement and reporting. So the average interface, I think one of Google's strengths is that the downside is that it's a self-service platform. Even the biggest advertisers we work with still end up having to do a lot of their work on, 
uh, themselves or hire an agency to help them for it. It's a self-service platform, but you get full transparency of reporting. So you get to be able to tell who clicked on your, uh, not like the name of the person who clicked on your ad, but where they came from, uh, what terms they searched on, uh, what their click-through rate, how much you paid. And so it's really fun to kind of dig into the data. And if you set up conversion tracking or analytics goal tracking, which is where you put a snippet of code on like the thank you page of say your e-commerce platform, you can actually tell how many people who clicked your website actually end up converting within 30 days. Uh, and we call conversion basically taking an action that you want them to take, whether it's a sale or signing up for a newsletter or visiting the contact us or even picking up the phone and dialing the phone number of the website. There are ways to track all these things and have them reported to AdWords so you can tell, yes, I put in $1 of advertising spend and I got $5 in revenue. And again, that's something you're not going to find offline. And to measure your campaign also, Ellen. Yeah. And to measure, of course, the reach and everything with your campaign. Um, okay, so we're done with search. Uh, so let's go back a little bit to the challenge. Why Google Online Marketing Challenge? So it is um, real money. We're giving you real money. So, not in cash, we're depositing it down. No. Sorry. But, we're giving you real money, and I think it's going to be hard for us to find something where you can really get real world experience. And I think just having the real stakes is something that is really awesome. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about the rewards and recognition um, that you get if you do win. Um, but even if not, you're going to get a lot of stuff in teamwork. We make you sign up in teams of at least three other students because we think that teamwork is the best way uh, to do it. And we've actually had winning teams that had not even met everybody in their entire group until the day that they arrived at Google to receive their prize. Um, uh, there's this Polish team where one person was actually studying abroad for the semester, and it's and so it was, but they were still able to form an effective partnership and be able to. Um, create this experience. And that is something that even when you're integrating Google, we're going to ask you about teamwork experiences and times you've had to collaborate and the challenges you've faced. So having something like this to talk about is huge. For professors, we give you grading materials. So we give you, you know, there's a digital marketing course online so that you can incorporate into this part of your class. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about how professors um, go into into a second. Uh, and then finally, career launching pad. People have been hired on. Well, well first off, Matt can talk a little about our shoot. Yeah, I mean, per personally, I think that this is the, the, the biggest piece to this. I mean, the real money is nice, the trip to California is nice, Dublin, London, whatever it be. But from my own experience, I think that really setting a nice foundation for yourself in, in digital marketing um, at a young age, perhaps before you even left school, uh, is a fantastic way to build your resume and find your jobs. But one thing that we've noticed going across agencies in Georgia, agencies in, in America, is that there are tons of digital advertising jobs out there, and there's not enough people yet to fill these jobs. Okay? The, there's not enough skilled people yet that are ready to fill these jobs, but there's a need for these people. So this is where you can really step in. And from my own experience, this is how I got hired. You know, before I left school, I got AdWords certified. It was a very quick process. It did take a little bit of studying. It took me about three days of classes to go through it. But it was a 45-minute test at the end of it. Passed it, no problem. And that little stamp on my resume right there did more, at least in my opinion, than, than you know, graduating with an undergraduate degree. Personally, I mean, you know, three days of, of work and a 45-minute test, personally, I, I believe, has done more for me than you know, four years at, at college. So, you know, it may be different for other people, but that's what I've, I've, I've found personally. And I think that it's something that I've noticed as well with working with a lot of the other agencies, the people that, that run these ads are all very young. You know, they, they are all very savvy, they're all digitally knowledgeable, and they're the people that are now eating the traditional advertising agency's lunch because <laughs> You know, the traditional advertising agencies don't know these skill sets yet. And young people, when they're, they're learning a new skill set, you're now employable, it, it makes fantastic differences out there. So I think that the, the launch pad for your career um, 
you know, even if you don't win this competition, which 99% of the people don't win this competition, <laughs> um, you know, it's a great way to then move into average certification and then perhaps get a job with Leaving Stone down the road. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I think one of the, we've had people get hired on by their companies. They've done such a good job that the companies have hired them on to run their marketing for them after college. Uh, we've had people get on TV in their country. Um, in, in the Philippines, just for winning the award, and some of their resumes keep piling in. Uh, people request participation certificates and the job interviews. Uh, so it definitely that goes a long way. And one of the best things about digital marketing is, especially for a country like Georgia that's still developing, you know, the economy is still relatively small. You can, you're not limited to working with Georgian companies. So in the challenge, you don't have to pick a business that's in Georgia. You can. And certainly, many of you probably will. But you can be advertising to people outside of Georgia. Maybe you're trying to export you know, Georgian meats, delicious Georgian food, and to people in Turkey. And you may run ads in Turkish in order to do that. Um, we've, had, you know, we've had teams in, uh, from a German university, um, but there's a team of Polish students working with an Italian professor with a business in Spain trying to advertise to people in the United States. Like, so it's certainly like you're not limited in terms of geography in terms of this competition or in general. I, oh, sorry. No. <laughs> I, 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 Jay actually met someone that was very interesting last week while we were in Istanbul, but uh, kind of going to this, it, 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 it's, it's a career that doesn't need you to always be at one single desk. I mean, you can travel around the world and do this. But Jay, you yeah. have a little bit about So there's a guy named Chris I met uh, in Istanbul last weekend at this bar, and it turns out that he was from Australia. And he was actually a one-man advertising agency, and he did all his work out of hostels, just traveled the world. And he had 30 clients, so spending over a million dollars a year or something. And you have a skill set, and you have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. You can employ yourself right here. Um, so it, you know, it's not only a great way to get a job; um, it could be a great way to create a job for yourself. Yeah. Um, so okay, next steps. Uh, first off, here's a big thing. You can't sign up on your own without a professor. It, it, uh, we, this is supposed to be an academic competition. So what we have uh, instead happen is that professors first register, and we have to verify that they are a professor at the university. It can be at any university. It doesn't have to be in Georgia. Um, but they have to have like their name and their email on the website of the university. And if you don't, for whatever reason, then you can email the, uh, the GOMC team. And you know, we've had people do things like photocopy their badges and, and email it in as proof. But uh, generally, you do need to prove that you are, in fact, you know, not just a scam person trying to get money. Uh, but after that, students then sign up under the professor. So typically, we either, and then the professor will verify that, yes, that is a student, and they are supposed to register under me. Um, there's no limit on the number of teams that a professor can have. The initial cap of invites is 10, but a professor can email in and get that raised to however many teams that they need. So typically students will either be as part of a class, so this professor will include this as part of their marketing class and make everybody in the class sign up and do their campaign reports as like one of the papers in the class, or students have just found, have been like, hey, I want to participate in this. They just ask a lecture, hey, can you sign up? And then sign us up. And that also works as well. It's open to undergraduates and to graduates, so there's no age restrictions either. So once you sign up, you get verified, and you find a business or a profit, they cannot have been advertising on Google within the last several months. So, you know, if the company is already on Google, unfortunately, right now at least, you, you cannot uh, be working with them. Um, and then lastly, you get the $250 in your account, you run the campaign, and then you um, upload your campaign report. So here are the dates of the competition. Um, it's actually a really great timing because it started two weeks ago, and it's going to be running for the next six months. So you don't have to do it tomorrow. You can if you want. Um, but you can, you can run it over any three-week period between now and the end of May. Uh, you probably need to start your campaign by the end of April in order to run the campaign. And no, you cannot spend any more money if you wanted to. We will disqualify you if you put in the credit card and start trying to spend more than $250 just to win the challenge. Uh, and then the results are going to be allowed in, in July or August. 
Um, in terms of support, you have the Google Plus community um, at the google.com slash online challenge site. And then you can also contact the support team if you need help. So a lot of people ask you, like, what are the tips for success? How, how, do you, how do you win the challenge? So in AdWords, uh, when you run the campaign, we actually have an algorithm that will look at, did you set up your campaigns correctly? Did you, divide, did you put all 500 keywords into one ad group? Or did you um, divide them out? Because typically, you shouldn't have more than 10 or 15 keywords in one ad group because you want to keep it as relevant as possible. And if you have 500 keywords, you can probably make it more relevant than that. Uh, do you use ad extensions, such as there's ways you can put a phone number in with your ad. There's ways that you can put other links to subsections of your website. You can put an address in there. An address in there. So those are called ad extensions. And, um, there's, and do you get good quality scores? Um, you know, what kind of volume are you seeing? So that by itself can get you to the semifinalist category, and then we'll hand pick through the semifinals to see what are the top five average accounts in each region. And that's where your campaign report is going to come into play. And your campaign report is going to be where you assess the context. What was your market? You have to do a pre-campaign report and a post-campaign report about this is our marketing plan, this is what we're trying to do, and this is what we accomplished. Mm -hmm. So great, you got a thousand clicks to your website over three weeks. Congratulations. What does that mean? What did that mean for your business? Did that result in more sales? Did that result in more people coming into the store? Um, we don't look at conversions. So setting up conversion tracking and, and doing it in AdWords, that's optional, but we're not going to be assessing you um, within the average account portion of the process on that. But when, you were, when you're one of the top five finalists and the global uh, academic, it's actually not Google that's going to be grading you, it's actually a series of marketing professors that have volunteered their time for this around the world to choose one reader in each region, they're going to be looking at things like, okay, well, if you didn't use conversion tracking, how else are you going to be assessing the impact? Maybe you're a nonprofit and you're trying to get a thousand people to your rally and you're going to be using Google search in order to do that. That's great. So we find that the, the best teams are able to demonstrate that. And they typically do that by choosing the right business to work with. So this won't be as much of a problem in Georgia, but sometimes people choose very high cost industries. Um, think industries like law firms, financial services, um, uh, industries that have, and you can actually use our keyword tool to look at um, within the average interface to look at how much a keyword might cost. But um, like what the competition in this certain industry will be. But you guys are actually a big advantage. So one question we get asked a lot is, is Georgian offered as a language right now? And right now it is not officially supported in the average interface. We do know people have been able to run ads in Georgia. They do run into some problems in terms of getting their ads approved. And you know, we're gonna try to follow up after we get back to California and see you know what the status might be. I I, I have no idea, but you know, we definitely think that Georgian should be offered as a as an AdWords language as soon as possible. But this um, could be a, a great way for you guys to, to dip your toes into you know, international marketing. Um, you know, running ads in English uh, in the United States, running ads in German for, for Germany, whatever it be. I mean, again, AdWords and, and this career path doesn't matter where you are. You can run these ads anywhere in the world. And even that international marketing right there is really going to help build up your, your career and your resume. So. Do consider that a little bit because um, you know it's an opportunity that you can take care of. That. Yeah. And one thing specific for Georgia because it's not yet when you set up your campaign and ask you to choose a language, um, it doesn't lie like Georgian yet. That's fine. Just select all languages. If you geo target to Georgia the country and you select all languages, then it'll just target anyone within Georgia who happens to be searching. Uh, because it's actually based not on what they actually tap into their browser, but what language they have as their default. Um, Google setting language. So they might have said English is just their, and many of you might have said English instead of Georgian is the language on your Google browser. Uh, so just set all languages and I think, and then try to type Georgian script and you should be okay, but there might be some challenges. But the advantage, I would say, in every challenge comes an opportunity, and the opportunity here is because of that in part, Georgia uh, doesn't have as much competition and the CPCs are a lot less. We give $250 to everybody, regardless if they're in the United States or Switzerland or if they're in Georgia. So $250 is going, if it's almost free, as you said, then you can, do, you can do a ton with $250. And that should be enough to really prove out what you're trying to achieve with whatever business or um, nonprofit that you work with. But make sure you chew them carefully, because even if they're an exciting business, 
make sure they're, they're a business that's interested. You know, we have lots of materials on our website in terms of like how to approach a business and a sample letter that you can give to them. But you want a business that's actually engaged and excited because you might have to make website changes. Um, website changes. Um, you might need information from them in terms of coupon codes or messaging. And you really want to foster a relationship. Think of yourselves as the digital consultant. Um, or your, uh, think of yourself as an agency working with that business, and they're your client. Or you can think about it in some ways as like a short-term internship with these companies. Because um, again, a lot of times these companies will hire on people that have done the online marketing challenge with them. Because they've never done digital advertising before, they run it once uh, with these students, and they want to continue running with these students, so they'll end up hiring them. So really, as Jay said, consider the business that you're going to run with very carefully, because you could end up working there. Um, so google.com slash online challenge is where you're going to find all this information and a whole ton more. There's also course materials on there about digital marketing course, Google Plus community, and honestly, when in doubt, just Google it. Even we oftentimes Google it. Um, and just two questions about Google products. So sometimes agencies have put together even better guides uh, and best practices than uh, we ourselves do. Um, there's a bunch of helpful links. I don't know that we can send out this entire deck, but at the very least we can send out the links. The two that I really want to focus on is the Online Challenge website, as well as the Google Partners website, which is google.com slash partners, where you can sign up and take the hour certification exam for free, which I highly recommend you do. You can also take an analytics certification exam, which is another great little stamp to put on the resume. Yeah. So great. You now know about hours in GOMC. You can dance your way down the street to do segments. Um, but honestly, this is just the beginning, and since we like videos, we'll end with a quick one, one of my favorites. Every year, Google does a year in review video called the Google Zeitgeist. Uh, so 2014 hasn't come out yet, but this is just the 2013 one.
I'm interested. Do you have competitors in online um, adult search marketing? Do we have competitors for, for search? <laughs> yeah. Not for yeah. adult search. Not on search. Yes. I think you know the answer to this. We, we do have competitors across yes. different spaces. Um, some of them you've probably heard of. Some of them you don't, that you haven't heard of yet. But and you probably you should. Heard. Um, I would say that, um, well, competitors in what space? Oh. Advertising? In social media. So, I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, yeah, it definitely is a competitive marketplace. And I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, for example, Google Plus, for example, Facebook. Yes. You know, I can't really speak to like that level of competition, but they're out there. You know, and I think that it keeps us on our toes. And it keeps us to keep improving our products. At the end of the day, we're not saying put all of your. Obviously, you know, we'd like to say 100% in Google advertising. But even when I'm talking to my own clients, I'm not saying don't advertise with other vendors as well. Um, because in the end, if you run ads with anyone else, most likely they're going to come through Google in the end to make that final purchase. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, say though, you're have to <laughs> so if you're running ads on Facebook, if you're running ads on other vendors, like we have several remarketing, marketing, um, other companies that also offer remarketing marketing services of various sorts, that's fine. But you know, also give us a try and do a do a you know head-to-head -head test and really go with the one that uh, you find is most effective. I think that the one thing to remember though is that we do it all and we measure it all, and it's all unified in one place with, with Google. So. It makes it a lot easier just to understand what your marketing is doing rather than trying to correlate what one thing is doing, what another thing is doing, and then making a bunch of spreadsheets to lay out how it's all working together. Uh, the nice thing with Google is that you're able to hit all the advertisers, all the customers out there, um, no matter where they are. Um, on, we run on 95% of the world's sites. Uh, our competition is only one site. <laughs> <laughs> Could you name the biggest companies uh, which use uh, Google advertising? Uh, unfortunately, I can't say who's like our number one advertiser, um, but I can say that you know, I mean, you've been on Google, you've been on the internet. Like, if you see a lot of ads from a brand, they're probably spending a lot of money through Google. Um, if you can think of a brand, is Lionsgate? Chance so. Uh, I'm not I know that uh, Lionsgate recently teamed up with Google to launch a campaign for their latest film, and they did it uh, on YouTube. So can I say that this is uh, part of Google advertising? Is uh, it one of the forms that you discussed with us today? It, yes. If they're running, yeah, if they're running on YouTube, then they're they're running with Google. Yeah, but it's not like ads before videos. They upload videos on YouTube, uh, which are. I'm not, I'm not sure about that specific initiative. We have things literally running every single day um, across, so unfortunately. And there's other partnerships out of advertising that we may do, but Jay and I are not as in tune with them. Mm. Yeah. So what about not spending but receiving money from advertising on YouTube? That's definitely possible. So there's two ways that you can make money if you have a website, you can sign up for a Google partner, uh, so, sorry, Google AdSense and that we can actually place ads on your website and then you keep a cut of the revenue. Same thing on YouTube. If you sign up for monetization and maybe you have a video, then whatever ads we serve on your site, you can get a cut of that. One thing to remember about it though is that, personally, I've made some money off of a video I have on YouTube. So I have a video from 10 years ago that now has 50, 60,000 views and I've made like $28 off of it. Um, I haven't seen those $28 yet because Google is only starts paying it out once it hits a $100 threshold. So um, just keep that in mind. Yeah. So I would say that, and particularly since CPCs are so low in the Georgian market, you basically have to really knock it out of the park in terms of, um, in terms of getting views in order to really make it worth your while. Um, cool. Any last questions? Oh, there you go. Can I display uh, AdSense in a Facebook application? I don't know, actually. Um, unfortunately, that's are you asking if you can make money from Google on Facebook? No, I have Facebook applications and uh, something now right with the Facebook and Google, I know the terms. And I want to uh, 
do some work and uh, from what I've heard and I don't want to give you the wrong answer right now, but from uh, from what I know, like they don't allow too much of uh, our code going on their site, so um, it may be tough. I don't know if they will be able to pay you out. Fortunately, there's a website you can go to to find out the answer to that. Google.com. <laughs> so, 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 sorry, we don't know the answer to that. I mean, we wish we could know all the answers, but um, yeah. But you're just people. Just people. Sorry for that. Cool. All right. Well, that then. Um, thank you all for coming. We'll stick around for a few minutes after.